Last up, we have pediatric diseases and disorders. Number one, again, don't make assumptions regarding diagnosis or treatment. Um, all of that does have to come from the physician, but you can certainly educate um, once those recommendations have been made. Um, we never recommend aspirin for children, um, especially for fever. It can result in a syndrome we call Rye syndrome, which is very serious and creates some issues. Uh, we've talked about high fever, so always notify the physician if there is a high fever okay, immediately. Um, generally, anything up to about 101 is considered relatively um, harmless and can mostly be treated at home. Some common diseases that you may see. Okay, head lice. Um, this is on a chart that I've given you inside of your notes packet. Uh, these are obviously small insects. Um, they do travel person to person. So they can hop from one person to the next. They do make a number of commercial products in order to get rid of head lice. Um, the big key here is to make sure that not only do we treat the head, but all of the bedding, pillows, you know, everything else that the child has touched must be washed as it can live on other um, surfaces. The herpes simplex virus, um, this is what causes cold sores. Um, so we treat these essentially like any cold sore. You can use ice um, to decrease the pain. And there's some over-the-counter antivirals that would help with this. Um, Infotigo um, is a staph infection. And it looks like um, a honey-colored bacteria, generally on the face. Um, again, because it's bacterial, we would treat this with antibiotics. Um, conjunctivitis is a fancy term for pink eye, and we've talked about that before. So this is not any different in children than it is in adults. Um, pinworms are actually a parasite. Um, they're transmitted by swallowing those worm eggs. Um, you can get them from touching something that's infected. Um, and generally, you have to treat the, the patient and the family okay, for pinworms. Uh, ringworm, on the other hand, is actually a fungal infection. Um, it looks like it's in a circular pattern. So we treat this with antifungals. And streptococcal sore throat is a fancy term for strep throat. Um, this is bacteria that causes this. Um, so you would, again, treat with antibiotics. AIDS, especially in the pediatric patients, can be difficult. Uh, we do try to convince pregnant mothers and to get an AIDS test while they are pregnant. There are some things we can do uh, to prevent the transmission from mom to baby, including C-sections and some other medications that would cut down the transmission risk to infants. Uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, or we call JRA, is an autoimmune disease. It is rheumatoid arthritis, which affects the joints. Uh, in this case, it's in children younger than 16, which is what makes it juvenile. ADHD, um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, they do have to be diagnosed with this through a psychologist and meet a certain level um, of things off of a checklist in order to be diagnosed with this. A learning disability, on the other hand, is usually diagnosed through school. Um, and there are a wide range of learning disabilities that might prevent a child from learning properly, especially in the intellectual and cognitive development um, while at school. And there are a number of programs in place for students who have learning disabilities, and this can be done right through the school system these days. Uh, cerebral palsy is a birth disorder. Um, and it's where the brain actually receives damage, usually due to lack of oxygen during the birth process, so during labor or delivery somehow. Um, and so this causes mental retardation. Okay, oftentimes, um, there may be no way to prevent this. Sometimes this is caused by negligence on the doctor's part. Congenital heart disease. Congenital really just means that um, this was formed before birth. Um, so oftentimes these will be caught in utero with an ultrasound. And there's a number of heart problems that can be found this way. Down syndrome okay, means that children have one extra chromosome, so part of their DNA. You can see the characteristic facial uh, features in this young girl here in the picture. 
Uh, they do have some slower cognitive development, um, and there is a wide range of development with folks who have Down syndrome. Okay, some tend to be fairly mild, and they can go out and get jobs and function as part of society, and some are much more severe, although generally with all patients with Down syndrome, you do see a decreased um, amount of growth. So all of their physical development tends to be behind, and their mental and cognitive development tend to be behind. Hepatitis B is no different than in the adult. That is a liver infection that we have talked about before, and it is a virus. In this case, there is an immunization available for the B type because it can be passed on from mother to child. RSV stands for Respiratory Succinctal Virus. Um, it is a major cause of a lower respiratory infection. It is very contagious. Oftentimes these children need to be hospitalized um, and treated with antibiotics. Um, if they develop any secondary infections, however, because it is a virus, um, if you just have RSV, unfortunately, we do have to just hospitalize and treat the symptoms. Sudden infant death syndrome, or what we call SIDS. This is an unexplained death um, in infants, and it usually occurs between the ages of two and four months of age. And children spontaneously will stop breathing. Um, in their sleep, and parents often find them um, still in the crib, okay, not breathing. There are some things you can do um, to prevent this. So there are some suggestions um, that the textbook has given us. And really, they come down to um, the way we put our children to sleep. So they should sleep on their back and not on their stomach. Um, there should not be pillows. Um, blankets should be securely tucked so that they will not cover over the infant's face or mouth. Um, and there should not be a lot of padding inside of the infant's crib so that there is really nothing there to suffocate, especially a young child between two and four. Realize that they don't have the muscle strength at this age to roll away or to push away from an object um, that might be over their face or over their mouth. Okay, so we do need to make sure that that area is, is quite clear to prevent the SIDS, although there are still cases where parents have done everything right and for some unknown reason, um, the child stops breathing in their sleep. Spina bifida. Um, it's a defect of the spinal cord. Um, it can be mild to severe. The one that's shown in the picture here is quite severe, uh, where the spinal cord is actually starting to grow outside of the body. Um, in this case, it would not be fully protected. Spina bifida can also just be the lower portion or that the skin is not closed properly. Um, obviously, treatment depends on the severity of the spine of it, on how much of the spine um, is, is formed properly. And viral gastroenteritis is inflammation um, of the stomach and the intestines. So this leads to vomiting, diarrhea, and we are concerned about dehydration loss, particularly in children with prolonged vomiting and diarrhea. Um, the last couple of concerns we have with children are regarding abuse or neglect. And you will spend quite a bit of time in Introduction to Healthcare course um, getting your certificate about child abuse. So I just want to touch on it here. Um, but some of the things you can do is watch for problems uh, with the relationship between the child and the parents or whoever is there as their caregiver. Observe for physical injuries that don't seem to come um, from a natural sort of injury, right? Kids do get a lot of bumps and bruises, um, and if it's a normal bumps, bruise, scrapes on the knees and the legs, um, you know, some of those are normal. However, if it's a lot of bumps and bruises or things that are very difficult to explain, that may indicate child abuse. Um, anytime you suspect there may be child abuse, you need to report it to the physician or your immediate supervisor, because these must be reported to the state by law. Um, the physician will examine for internal injuries, uh, malnutrition, and they may do a screening for that intellectual, that cognitive ability to diagnose any sort of learning disorders um, or mental development issues. Some risk factors that the book has identified 
um, for parents that put their children at risk are for parents who seem to be under a great deal of stress. Okay, this tends to increase the chance that a child will be abused or neglected. And also parents with financial problems are more likely to abuse or neglect their children um, in some way. Again, it must be reported by law. If you do not report child abuse by law, okay, you can be brought up on charges, fired, jailed, fined. Okay, so again, you'll talk for a few hours okay, in a seminar in your introduction to healthcare if you have not done that already. Um, but realize that it is reportable by law. All right, just a couple of eating disorders. These are most common in our adolescents. Okay, anorexia nervosa, and we've actually talked about this, um, was our patient who did not want to eat anything. And bulimia nervosa was the periods of binge eating followed by purging. Uh, depression, substance abuse, and addiction are also high in our adolescent population, uh, but again can be difficult to distinguish from um, depression to substance abuse as we've talked about in the past. They have some very similar symptoms, so just pull out those notes um, from a few weeks ago, and you know, you'll see that we spent about four or five slides okay, talking about this. Um, but do ask the family to see what changes in patient behavior um, you may have noticed or they may have noticed. Okay, violence is a big issue, and suicide is a big issue. Uh, be aware of all the warning signs. Again, always take any suicide threat seriously. Okay, we never, you know, even if you think they're joking around and they're, you know, they say they want to kill themselves, um, do take those things quite seriously as you never are really aware of what's going through a patient's mind. Um, so if they say it out loud, report it to the physician. And we just talked about STIs and birth control. So again, just make sure, especially for our adolescents, that these things are available in as many locations as uh, possible for our students to learn about. Okay, that will end the pediatric unit, so please do your homework, and I will see you right back in class. Thank you.